What's going on everybody? This is Stubbs from Retro Handhelds and today we're back with another product from Ann Burnick. I just want to show you from the unboxing experience to the game performance, uh, go over a little bit of the specs and compare it to other handhelds. So without further ado, let's look at the Ann Burnick RG35XX. All right, so Ambernic sent out uh, two devices to review. Thank you for that. Uh, we're gonna take a look here. So we have the uh, white and the DMG colored ones. So we're gonna look at both, but let's unbox the white one. Ooh. Went with the glossy buttons on the face buttons I see there. Oh, that feels nice. We have classic Ambernic D-pad pivot. Uh, right off the bat, feels very similar to the Mew Mini's face buttons, eerily similar. D-pad as well, actually a, maybe a little stiffer than usual Ambernic D-pads, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Start and select is gonna be rubber and the menu button here. Up top, we got a USB-C port, it looks like. Bottom, we have a the power port, also USB-C, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack out. On the side, we have two SD card slots here. TF1, TF2, we have the power button and the reset button. This is very similar to the 353V. We have plus and minus for volume, and we have four shoulder buttons. So L1, R1, L2, R2, and there it is, the RG35XX. Five volt rating for the battery at 75 watts, 2100 milliamp hours. Now, what else do we got for the specs here? Let's take a look. So this comes in gray, transparent white, uh, and transparent purple. Uh, screen 3.5 inch, IPS full viewing angle, OCA full laminated 640 by 480. We got a quad core ARM Cortex A9 in here. This is an ATM chip. This is a older Android SOC, but uh, I hear it runs up to PS1. So we're gonna dive into that and look at SNES and Game Boy Advance. Those are kind of the three systems I wanna focus on today for our emulation showcase. Uh, in the GPU side, we have the quad core PowerVR GPU, which classically PowerVR is kind of tough to get a uh, 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 solid performance on, especially in Sega Saturn, but I don't think we're playing Saturn today, so I'm not too worried about it. For RAM, we have a small, kind of paltry, 256 megabytes of DDR3. I'm a little disappointed in that choice. I know we want to keep the cost down under 50 bucks, but in Burnick, ah, uh, wish we could have gone 512. Now, Black Serif has taken the challenge to try to port lineage to this on that 256 megabytes of RAM, so running Android in this way might be doable. Uh, he's gonna see if that's possible. As far as other firmware, we heard that uh, there's a rumor that the Onion Dev team is making some sort of firmware for this. Now this has been all over. <laughs> We've heard all sorts of things about this. All I know for sure is that no devs can make any custom firmware unless and Burnick releases and opens the source, the kernel source. So and Burnick, if you want devs to make a custom firmware for this, you just gotta open that source. Uh, I know everyone's concerned about, oh, don't, you know, we don't want our proprietary stuff stolen, all that stuff, but there has to be trust with the community in order for the community to help out. They can't just jump when you say jump. So that's my thoughts on that hot take, right? Let's dive into other specs here that we have. So it has a 64 gig micro SD card that comes stock if you choose that option, of course. I think that's what I have in here. Yeah, 64 gigs. This runs Linux by default. Uh, it supports PS1, Final Burn Alpha, Final Burn Neo, CPS, Neo Geo, GBA, GBC, GB, SFC, FC, MAME, MD, GG, PCE, NGPC, SMS, WSC, and other formats similar to that. So that's basically, again, everything from Atari up through PS1. Uh, it supports putting on your own games. It has a mono speaker. 
uh, dual card slots, like I was saying. Maximum of 512 gigs is what they officially support, although I'm sure you can throw a terabyte in that bad boy. Although in Linux, maybe I shouldn't be so fast to call that out. Uh, for the battery, we have a 2100 milliamp hour that should last you about five hours on standard gaming conditions. Uh, charging is going to be taking a 5 volt charger at 1.5 amps. Supports 2.4 gigahertz Bluetooth. And there's an HDMI output for TV and a rumble motor actually in here. And I, I have to correct myself from earlier, that's not a USB-C up top. That is totally that uh, HDMI out. So we'll make sure to, uh, to get that called out here. But that is really neat. So we can do HDMI out out of here as well as it sounds like there is Bluetooth in here. We got... Those classic colored instructions, cool. We have wipes and we have the screen protector. So that is the, this is the white model, transparent. Moving back to my impressions. Uh, this is, I mean, I like the, I, I like the, the hazy shell in the transparent. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of having these glossy black buttons mixed with these matte uh, dark gray D-pad and start and select. But I do really enjoy the look of the DMG model. So here's the DMG model. Again, glossy buttons, but this looks very similar to the Mew Minis. Red, black, start, select. And actually on this one, the D-pad is a little more play to it. Am I crazy? A little more play. Yeah, just, oh, just slightly. Huh, that's kind of interesting. Let's, we'll have to compare those. Uh, again, here's the back of the DMG model. You know, this is the same L2, R2, L1, R1 as the 353V. It looks like, oh, so similar. So if you've watched our videos on the 353V, that should give you a good, a good idea about that. It feels good. Not as good as stacked, but uh, those are. this is a much improved design on those standard and Burnick inline <laughs> L1, R1, L2, R2s. So here you have it, folks. This is the 353, or I'm sorry, this is the 35XX. Now, there was some talk about whether there'd be rounded corners on the transparent model versus the DMG, and they are the same. They are exactly the same. People also ask me to do a rattle test in our Discord. So I'll put this up to the microphone here. So it looks like those stack shoulder, those uh, shoulder buttons are what's causing the rattle. I don't hear anything rattling around in there. Let's try the other one. That's strange. Huh, the transparent is slightly quieter when you rattle it. Also the transparent has more black uh, shades for the shoulder buttons and the DMG has dark gray. So those are slightly different. Maybe there's, no, those are about the same. So there's your rattle test. Now everybody asks about the mouthfeel lately. That's I guess a staple on our channel. So let's do, let's do the mouthfeel. Yep, tastes like plastic. You know, it's solid. It's a solid, solid mouthfeel. Uh, Let's compare the size. Let's compare the size to some other handhelds in its class. So comparing to the Mew Mini, and then we'll compare it next to the RG353V from Ann Burnick, which as you can see is very similar, except these have matte buttons, which I prefer to these glossy buttons. Stepping up a little bit, we're gonna put up a Game Boy Color. And finally, the big boy, the OG DMG by Nintendo. So there you have it. That's kind of a good look. Let's make sure these are all aligned correctly. So yeah, there is a size comparison. Uh, I'm gonna throw a couple of screenshots of a, uh, I'm gonna throw up a couple pictures on our Discord in the RGH Discord. And you can take a look. There's a little bit more in-depth uh, comparisons with, with measurements. Very specific if you're going to be doing any modding for this. Swapping out buttons, putting skins, making skins. So you might want that info. So take a look at that. And uh, I'll try to put in the description too. So here we go. Here's the classic lineup. 
The Miu Mini, if we compare the button feel, this is a V2 Mini. If it wasn't for the fact that the Miu had slightly rounder edges on the D-pad, I almost would think it's the same D-pad. No, it's not. But it's very, it's so similar in, in how that, that play is happening. Uh, these face buttons, I was gonna say they're the exact same, but they're, they're slightly different. There's a slightly different shade of red. These are clicky start and select, whereas these are mushy start and select. Of course, on the Miu Mini, you have these inline, which I do not like as much. I much prefer this, easier to grip. Although the Miu Mini does have a mod add-on where you can make better shoulder buttons that are similar to this. Right off the bat, I can tell you this. Miu Mini is awesome. I love it, but my hands cramp after a while because it's a little too small for my hands. So this might be my go-to because already it just feels more comfortable for me. I've loved the 353V. It's probably one of my favorite verticals this year. And this, I honestly usually ignore those joysticks when I'm playing these days. So having not having these in something that it's a little weaker, much weaker CPU, um, but this is nice. This is like something you could throw in your pocket. Speaking of pocket, let's do a pocket test. Yeah, that sits really nicely in there. Not as pocketable as the Miu Mini because these shoulder buttons protrude. So this is gonna be, of course, a little more pocketable. But what everybody wants to know today is, what can you do with this? Specifically, how does SNES perform? How does PS1 perform and how does GBA perform? So we're gonna take a look, let's boot it up. We're gonna take a look at the stock OS experience, which is the only OS we're gonna have for right now. Uh, we will see what custom firmware options are available soon. More to come on that. Let's boot her up. Hmm. Interesting OS choice. It's clean. It looks good. Very Angry Bird-esque with these icons. Okay, but this is clean. It's already pre-scraped. Let's do something to push it. So let's start right out with Tekken 3. Now we're gonna be playing these with and without filters. We'll take a look at some GBA scaling options. We'll check for fast forward. Uh, confirm if there's hotkeys. Let's look for screen tearing. So far the screen quality looks pretty decent. I gotta compare it to the Miu and the 353V. Again, this is the Miu Mini version two. All right, first let's just compare the Miu Mini screen to the 35XX. The Mini is a little bit richer in its blacks, whereas the 35XX looks a little bit I want to say it looks a little bit sharper, but I want to confirm there's no filter on. Let's take a look at that filter option here. So if we go to the menu button, it looks like we have some options here. We can exit game, save game, load game, restart game, do a video display effect, uh, do a backlight brightness. Oh, let's actually move that up. So five is the highest. We have a BIOS option using HLE or uh, the standard PS1 BIOS. Vibration, we can enable or disable. You know, I wonder if there's a performance difference having a vibration on or off, on and off. I heard RetroArch is not in this system, and I know there's there's classically been issues where turning on vibration sometimes creates frame rate drops. And I, if I remember right, that was in, I think it was in a Dolphin emulator actually, but nevertheless, we'll try it with on and without. We'll try it with and without. So I'm guessing fast is going to be no filter. Oh yeah, that's that's definitely sharper. Let's take a look now. Yeah, I like the I like the contrast better on the mini. But I love how big the 35XX screen is 
and how sharp it appears. Space buttons feel good. Uh, D-pad. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to test this D-pad. Let's play a little bit. Uh, no slowdown though so far. I mean, this is running. I don't see any frame rate options to actually confirm the frame rate, but it feels full speed to me. And of course, if we compare that to the mini. There is slowdown on the mini right away, right off the bat. You see that? So the rumor was is that PS1 on the 35XX was a little bit better than the mini. And so far in the first game anyways, that does seem to be the case. Now comparing speaker quality, there's the Mew Mini. This is the non-upgraded, non-modded speaker. Um, comparing to the 35XX. Neither one is a super impressive speaker to be honest, but let's, I'm trying to get a, put them both to my ears here. I mean, they're both mono. They're both mono low-powered speakers. So I mean, they they're serviceable. Again, here's the mini, and here's the SX. So to address the elephant in the room, this does appear to be a direct competitor competitor with the Mew Mini in many aspects. Huh? That's my best pun of the of of the day. Um, but it's a little bit bigger, which is a little bit good for ergonomics, for people with big hands perhaps, for me at least. So I like that. It does seem to be just a little more powerful. I wonder what we can do with custom firmware. Could we get something like the Super Mario 64 port uh, running in Linux? Because that would be really, really cool. This also seems to be around the same size as the RG300, if anyone remembers that device. It was one of the original Inburnic verticals. Um, also, you can get a PS1 boost in the Mini if you load Onion OS on here. So that's going to give you a bit of a boost. I also hear uh, swapping out the PS1 BIOS tends to help, although I've also heard that that's a complete old wives' tale. But realize I believe I'm on stock OS right now on this on this Mew Mini unit. So we're comparing stock versus stock right now. Now, already I can tell you, for the price of $50, which is the introductory price, it will go up to like $56 in a few days. And then uh, if you want to get the highest end version with all the bells and whistles, bag, and all that stuff, then you're going to be looking at around $70. Either way, $50 to 70 bucks definitely puts this in an impulse buy range. So if you order now, I mean, if they can keep up with shipping, you might get this for Christmas for you or a loved one. That's pretty cool. Uh, I gotta say though, as far as just commentary, what I'm feeling emotionally about this is that Ambernic has been putting out a lot of handhelds this year. Uh, very, very fast. And again, it's tough for some of these review teams to keep up with, with the output because it is so fast. They're flooding the market with devices, hoping to get a hit on their hands. This could be a hit. I'm already feeling that. I mean, it's basically the 353V with less system options, but it's smaller and without those joysticks being in the way. So this is something I could see taking with me on a plane, taking with me on a train, taking with me on any number of Dr. Seuss rhymes. So I am liking that so far, but again, it's so many devices. I kind of wish Ambernic would slow down, focus on each device as, uh, and give it the love it needs so we can get custom firmware going a little faster. 
and people have time to enjoy them, digest them, really build around the devices. When we're going so rapid fire like this, I mean, we're not going to be seeing all the custom firmware options until next year uh, across these devices. So, I mean, they're all babies right now. They're just waiting for the potential, uh, waiting for the potential to be completely unlocked. We've already seen that in some of the other Ambernic devices, such as the 353M and the new lineage builds from Black Seraph. I mean, that's really cool. So more to come on that, but let's compare this to the 353V. We're gonna do, let's do a different game. Why don't we do some SNES? Yeah. Donkey Kong Country. Donkey Kong Country. Do, 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 do. So comparing the screen to the 353V, which by the way, I really like the speaker on the V. This is a little more expensive. You know, um, this isn't the V, sorry. This is the VS. So this is the VS. The Linux only variant, which is a little cheaper, coming in just under 100 bucks, but this does have more performance. So this will be able to play past PS1, some N64, Dreamcast, PSP. It's running that Rock Chip 3566. This benefits also from having triple the RAM, at least. I believe this VS has a gigabyte in it. But the 353V is even more pricey, but it adds Android, doubles the RAM, which allows for more systems to play, and you have more OS options. So that one is coming in over a hundred bucks, you're gonna find it generally between a hundred and hundred and thirty. Amazon, always of course, you're gonna find it a little bit more, but you get it right now and that's nice. Let's take a look at the options we get for SNES. Also, we wanna look for screen tearing. So let's be, let's be watching that. People are also asking, is there fast forward or hotkeys? Uh, there's no retroarch on here, and it does not appear to be that there's any hotkeys or fast forward currently. Uh, there is save states though, so you can save game and load game. And you can also see it has, it's not ghosting, it's like a, you see what I mean when I move the screen here? What do you call that? Like some sort of like chromatic aberration type effect, just slightly. I don't know if this is screen tearing so much as just a little bit of lag. Like it's not running full frame. That's, have the experts weigh in. You know, stay tuned for Russ's video tomorrow. He's gonna have his impressions out tomorrow with a deep dive review a little bit later on um, after he gets back from his fun trip. But yeah, initially there's either a little bit of screen tearing or a little bit of lag happening. So if we compare the screen quality though, you see on the, on the V here, it does not have that aberration happening with the pixels, as well as yeah, there's no there's no tearing that I'm that I'm noticing. But as far as richness and color is concerned, which I'm not the expert at explaining this, but the V is a little bit richer. Seems a little bit richer of color. I want to get some. I'm gonna try to get to that part of the game where there's the. Uh, let's do a direct comparison. I don't know what that was about. I don't know, what are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments. Which screen looks better? Don't know why, oh, I think that maybe the screen's going to sleep. I don't know why that's going. Cool. That was weird. Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> ah, yeah, it went, it just timed out. All right, so I need to mess with the timeout settings. They almost look like the same screen, but I know that they're not, but they're very similar. Again, I think the V is a little bit richer in contrast, so slightly. Um, and you can kind of see on Dixie Kong that the, the pink on her hat and uh, shirt is a little bit richer. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Cheeto Steve. Okay, I don't know what that's about, but that's silly. Let's power on this unit. 
think the battery's maybe drained. So let's charge it. All right, now we're we have power running to it. Let's see if we get any signs of life. No power. Huh, I think we got a DOA device here. You know, this has been in the mail too, so I will try it again later and update in the comments, but as of now, this one just doesn't even turn on. I can see a little bit of condensation underneath here. That's not good. More to come on that. Okay, but let's go to the settings and see what we have. So here's the settings. Uh, we have battery. We have an input-output test. Oh, look at that. Nice. I'm glad that they included this. So we can test the directions. Select start. V, A, X, Y, L, R, L2, R2. Start, select. And everything works. That's good. All right, button sound, yes or no. We'll say no. Theme settings. Oh, there's different, hey, look at that. Some different themes. Oh, and here's literal Angry Birds. Um. <laughs> okay, so there is an Angry Bird theme. That's, that's something. It's good to have options, right? You know, I like I think I like that one the best. What do you what do you guys think? Which theme do you like the best? I think theme four. Theme four is where is what I'm gonna do. Uh, background settings. So we have some different background images. Looks like we have a ship. That's kind of fun. Green background and the same ship picture? No. I don't know. Oh, I guess image three just rotates through images. I'm not sure. What in the world? This is ridiculous. Okay. Schedule power off. I wonder if that is what's happening. So let's do, let's not schedule any power off. No, thank you. I don't know why that's on by default. It does ship in English this time. That's good. And for brightness, we have backlight time always. Backlight brightness levels one through five. So let's do the bright, the brightest setting, mid setting, and here's the lowest brightness setting. That's gonna be nice for bedtime though, because that's the real test for me. I usually play most of my retro gaming uh, right before going to sleep, and I don't like to wake my wife or keep her awake, so uh, having a very dim screen is so very important, and so far this looks very nice and dim. Very nice and dim. Okay, extra bonus points for me in that area. You know, speaking of points, I'm not gonna do a full review, probably on much of anything anymore. It, just for me, I've noticed, noticed over time, the review videos, uh, I don't know if I'm the authority to talk about review videos. I really like to leave that uh, to Russ, who is the best reviewer in our scene, in my opinion. So I'd like to leave thoughts for him on uh, deep dive stuff and final conclusions. I don't want to draw so many conclusions. I really think running this more like short circuit uh, might be the way to go. So I want to focus more on doing, just showing off which handhelds uh, we get here and showing impressions. Of course, Zoo and our the rest of our review team will still be doing regular reviews, but I'm really going to be focusing on doing these impressions. I have so much fun with these. And uh, yeah, yeah, I want to give you my raw unfiltered thoughts and my final opinion of devices is kind of a moving target that changes over time depending on custom firmware and modding and things like that so i'm going to give you my thoughts but i'm not going to give you any final conclusions looks like you can clear history clearing history no clear favorites clear core association this is running firmware version 1.2 so it looks like it was made December 3rd, 2022. So this, I mean, this was rushed out the door fast. They're probably hoping the community will make some, some firmware, but gotta open source. Can't do much without source. 
Unless you're making Android and you're Black Seraf and you're a crazy genius. Let's try some other stuff, shall we? Uh, zombies eat my neighbors. Perfect. So I definitely can feel that this D-pad is an eight-way. That you can have... It, so it pivots very much like boom, 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 boom. But if you lean into it, you get a little smoother transition from direction to direction. I can't say that this is any different than their other D-pads, though. So far, it seems to perform the same, which is that classic Ambernic feel. I'm a fan of that. Seems accurate. Let's see. Although, and maybe it's my thumbs, but if I push too hard, I accidentally go into the upper left or upper right. So I have to be very deliberate and kind of press at the edges for my thumbs. Because as you know, as you know, my name's Stubbs, and I have stubby thumbs. In fact, they're different sizes. Alright, you want to take a look at some filters? I do. So that's fast. Here's dot matrix. Now the nice thing with a dot matrix filter is that I'm not noticing that aberration effect anymore. I like that. That's decent. HD, what's HD? Okay, here's HD. You got some anti-aliasing going on. It's good. I don't prefer to use that myself. And here's scan lines. Ooh, scan lines are not my favorite, but there's that classic CRT look. Yeah, for me, I just like the sharpest image possible. I don't mind if there's aliasing and, and edges to the pixels at all. Which will be great, because if you plug in your CRT monitor to this via an HDMI adapter, then it's going to look pretty freaking sweet. So yeah, I don't notice any slowdown in Zombies Eat My Neighbors, and that looks good. Now, the rest of the team is going to be loading on more custom games, loading things like Yoshi's Island. I'm going to stick to the complete stock experience for today. Uh, I might make a uh, like an emulation showcase follow-up, though, where I, where I do show. Ninja Warriors. What's Ninja Warriors? Yeah, and these filters. Let's try again. They didn't seem to have a performance hit by running them, which is always appreciated. Let's do the HD filter. The thing I don't like about the HD filter is that it's not quite as sharp. While technically it, it, it rounds out the edges, which is, does look attractive. Nah, that's what that's what you want. But yeah, I don't see slowdown from the from using those filters. Oh, also something to remember that Damien pointed out to me today, because he just got his as well. Uh, he was saying that uh, it remembers just one filter setting, so if you leave the HD filter on, it's going to apply that to every system, not just SNES. It's going to apply that to PS1, it's going to apply that to GBA, so just realize you need to change that every time. If you want different per system, that's not there yet in this software. Okay, that's uh, that's Ninja, Ninja Warrior. I'm trying to find more of a. We have Star Ocean. Nice. Let's do Star Fox. You know, Star Fox classically is one of those 
games that has that extra uh, chip in it on the SNES cartridge that makes it diff more difficult to, uh, to emulate. So let's see how it handles Star Fox. Jap uh, Japanese version. I do not expect this to be full speed, but we'll see. This this does appear to run at full speed. Now this is a game though, if it can handle it, I'd love to put a filter on, uh, put on that HD filter. What does that look like on this? No, still not seeing any slowdown. That's very encourageable. It's very encouraging. Let's, let's try out these shoulder buttons. Do some barrel rolls. So there's your classic and burn it claw grip, man. But I gotta say, uh, I think that's a little bit more comfortable than the VS. Yeah, it's about the same. I'd say the comfort's about the same there. I much prefer this though, again, to having like the Miu Mini style. You know, one thing I thought about the software is it is kind of similar to MinUI, where you don't get RetroArch. You get a limited bunch of essential settings in that function menu. But you do get save states. So at a minimum, it's a decent starting point. I really, really wish we could get a more fully fleshed out OS, but more to come on that. I have no doubt that something will be made by somebody. All right, that seems to run fine. I don't see Yoshi's Island on here again, otherwise I would love to try that. Let's double check. Now Yoshi's Island is a pain to run full speed, so that is the ultimate test. I, not a game I would expect to run full speed on here. A little bit of tearing like we saw in Donkey Kong Country. Now here's something, is that I'm not seeing screen tearing in any of the other games we've played so far. So I really think this Donkey Kong Country 2 was a little bit wonky for us. Yeah, I'm not seeing Yoshi's Island. Let's move on to GBA. And let's do, let's do tech in advance. what kind of scaling options we get here. So the same exact options here. No scaling options. Uh, but let's see if it auto scales. Because so far it seems like everything just auto stretches to be full. So you do not get the option to scale it any other way at the moment. Which for me, I'm good with because I always stretch because I don't like to see any of the bezel. Tech and advanced for GBA. Nice. Yeah, this is great. These face buttons. Again, they, they play they're the same play and travel as the Mew Mini. Like, literally the same. I, I I can't, maybe I'm a simpleton, I just I cannot tell a difference between those two. Um maybe the, the mini has doesn't quite extend as much. I feel like they're a little bit more shallow, at least these buttons. Yeah, you can press those nice and fast, and you can press those nice and fast. That's all I care about. So those really do feel the same. I think people will be a fan of that. If 
they're the same size, you should just be able to swap out buttons, and you have a whole you have a whole bunch of mods already to go from Sakura, RetroGame.Evo. Alright, so there's GBA for you. Um, let's just confirm on PS1 that we don't have any other menu options. Ooh, Tenchu. Heck yeah, Twisted Metal Man. How well Bloody Roar 2 would run on this. That'd be something interesting to try out. Bloody Roar 1 is... on here though, so we'll try that. Well, that definitely is running full speed. Okay, this is a lot of fun for fighting games. I gotta say that so far. Like, these controls are spaced apart just enough for me and my thumbs. I think I could play this for a long time. I will say that I'm noticing it's getting a bit warm in PS1, which doesn't surprise me. Plastic's starting to get a little warm back here. Not hot, but warm. That's not something I noticed much on the uh, the VS unless you really pushed it. But I mean, this is getting that's getting hot. Also, not something I noticed on the Mew Mini. Okay, Bloody Roar One looks good. Trying to think anything else we want to take a look at. Probably Arcade might be one to check out. FBA hack, hack game. Yeah, Final Burn, Neo. Can be hit or miss on these lower end chips. Let's give it a shot. Here's where the slowdown starts. So here's now where the chip is starting to work a little bit hard. I can tell that it's pushing for full speed and it's probably just a few frames shy of it. Totally playable, but you can definitely notice just the slightest, just the slightest amount. Device is getting warm when, you, when you're pushing it, of course. Overall, though, I mean, at fifty at fifty dollars, you're looking at a comparison to devices like the uh, the two hundred and eighty V. These days is, is around that price point. You're looking at devices like the Pow Kitty, the V ninety, uh, any of those lower end Pow Kitty devices, as well as other Ambernic devices like the RG three hundred and fifty, the three hundred. And compared to those devices, this is impressive. So this is a great value, I believe, so far at $50. Once it goes up to 56, and if you're talking about extra shipping above that, I, uh, which I haven't heard of that about, about that happening, but if that did happen, I think this that would push it into, well, eh, maybe just get a VS, you know? Because the VS is great, looks just like this, just performs better. And a not too much more uh, not too much more monies. By the way, with less characters on the screen, this is now running. This is now running fine. So I'm not noticing any slowdown. Let's wrap things up. What did we think about the Ambernic RG35XX? Oh, you can you can favorite your games. That's kind of cool. Favorites. Uh, how many, the history of your games, and there's a search function. All right, seriously though, let's wrap things up. What do we think about the 35XX? So, it's awesome that you can just boot it up and play it. It just works. Uh, save states are in the function menu. You don't ever have to mess with hotkeys, which is great. Uh, it has a couple filters. Uh, depending on the game, they don't really seem to hit the performance too hard, if at all. Uh, that may be an issue with 3D SNES games, but again, we tried Star Fox and it seemed fine. Uh, on PS1, I would expect it to dip just slightly. 
I mean, it's got to. Uh, one weird thing is that, yeah, like we said, the last filter you used for all the systems, the handhelds remember is just that setting. So it's that one setting for all systems. Also has what I believe to be a few unnecessary functions in the settings. And uh, having things like an Angry Bird icon pack might be fun for some people, but uh, not something I prefer in the stock OS experience. Now, the stock OS is similar to mini UI having no hotkeys. And of course, there's also no fast forward, like we said. Uh, there's no retroarch. You're limited to essential settings, which is nice. Um, but we really do need custom firmware or some other options to push the limits of this chipset and this device. I really hope that there's an initiative to get that done and that kernel source is open because we cannot get custom firmware and Bernic time and time again unless we get the kernel source. It's just not a reliable thing to do going forward for these Linux-based operating systems. So really want, would want to push you and uh, on behalf of the entire community say we just need to have source. We're not looking to take anything from it. We just want to open source so we can build awesome things so that people can enjoy your devices uh, in new ways. And that should be a win-win for everybody. You'll sell more units, you'll, uh, you'll have the backing of the community, and the backing of the devs, as it stands now, it's it looks like we're stuck with this stock OS, which is functional, which is bare bones and works. It just boots up and works. Coming into this as a casual everyday user, that's awesome. I think a lot of people will be happy with this if they were to get it as a Christmas present, and now is the perfect time to buy one. If so, shipping times should be pretty fast knowing Ambernic. Uh, Pick it up while it's a lower price if you're gonna get it. This really is, again, buy it now for Christmas. It's a good gift, it's 50 bucks. Uh, after it goes up, it's even a good deal at $56 in my opinion. Uh, I didn't like that on Donkey Kong Country on SNES, it was a little, little bit slow. I think that's one that should be able to play no issue. Um, but all the other SNES games, including 3D Star Fox, worked just fine, so that's awesome. Um, I like that there's filters there, although I like to play with them off, so that's good. And we'll have to try some more games in another video and look for more videos from us, from Zoo and Aish and uh, Damien, who's doing a live stream, and the whole team. Also check out Russ's video tomorrow which should be there for impressions with his full review coming uh, later on after his trip. So look for that on the Retro Game Core channel. Also look out for Raven Mage's written review of this on our website, which is retro-handhelds.com. Again, my final takeaway for this impression is, I mean, for 50 bucks, I like it. I'm gonna carry it around with me. I'm gonna take it to on errands uh, when I'm hanging out with the kids and the family. You know, while we're while we're watching Shrek, this is the perfect device to enjoy and just pick up and play some of my favorite SNES games like Mega Man X or on PS1 playing games like uh, that rely on the D-pad that don't use the the Dual Shocks as much. Uh, Twisted Metal series, you know, games like that. I think this is. I think this is a good bargain for 50 bucks. There's things that could be better, but again, I gotta come back to the fact that it's 50 bucks, and I think the modding community community is gonna have a hell of a time with this thing. I think they're gonna come in here, put new skins on this, put new buttons in, uh, modify it as they will. I think you're gonna see options from Sakura Retro Modding and RetroGame.Evo, and uh, I can't wait to see it. And I can't wait to see what we can do with this. Again, you could pick up a couple of these and not be spending that much money. I'm saddened to say that my second review unit here is dead on arrival. I've been charging it during this whole recording process and it is still, I just get nothing. I'm gonna RMA this and get a replacement because I really wanted to have a second unit to do for the holiday giveaway. So I would love to give away one of these. Maybe I'll just give away this one, but uh, I wanna get this replaced. So. One out of two works just fine. All in all, this has been Stubbs with Retro Handhelds. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy our content, and we will uh, bring you more as soon as we can. 
I really love bringing these videos to you all, so just, yeah, leave us your thoughts in the comments. What do you think about the 35XX? Is this one you want to pick up? Is this one you think uh, is, is going to be doable for you, going to be a good Christmas present for someone in your life? Or is it a complete and utter failure, and you're passing on it, and you're picking up the Miu Mini instead? Because at that price point, if you can get them in stock, the Miu Mini is still an awesome choice. It's a little smaller for smaller hands, or for bigger hands. My recommendation though, if you have the money for it, I would still go for the VS. Not, not too much more, it can do a lot more, and in general, I like it a little better. So, those are my thoughts. That's all I got. Uh, take care of your handhelds, everybody, and each other. Mm -hmm.